We've got Jeremy Abobasi here of the San Jose Earthquakes joining us. j -Bo, what's going on, man? How you doing? Not much. Doing well. How about you? I'm excited, man. It's the dawn of a new year. Um, I didn't want last year to really come to an end the way it did because the start of the season wasn't ideal. There was a lot of outside noise going on, and then it felt like the team kept on getting better as the year went on. You were getting better as the year went on, man. Like, let's just go back into that 17 goals and three assists because – in our preseason interview, you told me that you wanted to combine on 15 goal scoring plays. Like that was kind of the number you threw out there and you were in on 20 of them. So you exceeded your expectations and it just seemed like you were getting better and better as the year went on. Like that has to be satisfying, right? There, there's satisfaction that comes knowing that you set a target for yourself as an individual uh, and through the collective effort of the team, you're able to accomplish that individual goal. Mm -hmm. But that target the satisfaction really uh, hits different when the team is successful and mm -hmm. so for us to be at the bottom of the west uh, was greater than any satisfaction uh, that i might have had on on those individual moments i mean it was a very tough year mentally yeah you know, guys in the locker room could uh, sense the frustration around in, in different moments could sense some of the urgency to, to flip the situation and frankly people that I talked to outside of my immediate team circle understood that uh, it was a very taxing season mentally and I wasn't really able to process the beauty of, of the individual. Yeah and I, listen I respect that because you've always been a team first guy and while it's great that you're scoring goals I'm sure it's for us you'd rather score game winners right like you want to be the one that's the ultimate difference maker how does that set the stage for this year for you knowing that you guys want to build upon last year, knowing it wasn't up to, not up to snuff for you guys. Yeah, I think it's a new year, so we have a clean slate. We have a little bit of a chip on our shoulder given that it was a difficult year last year. Frankly, I don't think that people respect what we are capable of doing enough, and that's because we haven't put together 90 minute games on a consistent basis, mm -hmm. but uh, to underestimate us will be, you know, to the detriment of any team that, that decides to do that. So we'll welcome, any of the underestimation and we expect to be back where we feel we should be which is fighting for playoffs and mm -hmm. ultimately fighting for a cup trophies uh, leagues cup open cup etc yeah. it was cool watching you at training the other day because you were saying to christian espinosa you were you said something like aim for our waist or aim for our knees or something when you guys were doing drills that's like the side that we don't ever get to see if we just watch the game like there's active practice of like what you guys are talking about and communicating and how to work together like that that communication aspect i think it's way downplayed compared to what we actually see on the field yeah i think people like to minimize the amount of work that goes into uh, an entire week's training yeah and ultimately with the product that they see on the field you know they see a missed opportunity and they think that person wasn't applying himself thinking about the situation mm -hmm. and whatnot when really uh misses happen, yeah. miscommunications happen, but that is what we're working on every single day on the field, uh, on the training field. And so in, in that particular moment that you're alluding to, I was talking about the desire to be perfect. It's just in us. It's what has gotten us to the professional level. Mm -hmm. Now that we're here, we have to understand that perfect can't be the enemy of the good. Uh, and aiming in a zone that gives you a high likelihood of getting it into the back of the net by any mm -hmm. means necessary is better than aiming for the inch perfect ball yeah. and potentially missing that inch perfect ball, which is takes you out of that optimal zone of just making something happen out of not the best situation. So I talk about aiming for knee waist, because if you miss, you're going to hit the foot or you're going to hit the head. If you aim for the perfect climax in the air for mm -hmm. a header and you miss high, no one's going to get that header. Uh, and it's the same thing with spaces that you talk about attacking. It's very difficult when there's a, no a lot of numbers in the box and you're outmatched to find a runner in the box. Mm -hmm. I played on the wing, so I understand the difficulty in that. What I was told as a striker by one of my previous teammates at a, in a different club was get to the PK spot, get between the PK spot and, and the six, mm -hmm. get behind the center backs and attack the ball. And that's something that I try to translate with the wingers here. If you try to read certain movements, sometimes it'll be very obvious, but other times it won't be. Mm -hmm. And when it's not, you just need to have a default that you, that you turn to and trust that your teammates on the same page. And uh, 
you got to improvise. So I, I talk about these kind of general principles and hopefully they, they serve us well, but at the end of the day, teams, teams can be prepared for tendencies and then you got to yeah. improvise with what you're given. Well, there was a play, I can't remember which game it was. It was at home, but you scored a goal and Joe Cannon immediately said, he's been talking to Chris Wondolowski and we watched the replay and you did like one, two, three, four cuts before you got to the ball and you could see the defender just got lost, didn't know where you were. Like, I obviously, like, you got to see a little bit of Wondolowski up close. Is that rubbed off on your game consciously or subconsciously? I think both. I mean, we talk a lot. He's on the field with us, obviously, as a player. And then now, as a coach, he's been with us. Mm -hmm. He's been leading a lot of finishing drills. He's a great resource for the club and for us as younger players who are hoping to try to, to reach what he, he's accomplished. So if it's rubbing off, then, then I'm proud of that because yeah. – with the number of goals he scored, if I can score half of that amount, then, then I'll have had a good career. <laughs> yes, that would be a very good career, man. And just how do you feel about your game right now? Like, obviously, you've been in this league for a while, but you keep on getting better. Like, there's clearly an ethic in you that's not like, oh, well, I got to this level. Like, you had hit double-digit goals before, and then you weren't satisfied. You went way beyond your personal best last year. Yeah, I'm a little bit frustrated um, with some of the – the opportunities that maybe have come out of the play. So I think that uh, that drives me to, to be better. Mm -hmm. I'm also frustrated with the way in which our season ended and our record and our placement. And that tells me that I was missing something as well. Uh, that tells me that, sure, I scored 17 goals, but was I as effective as I could be defensively? Mm -hmm. Was I effective as I could be in possession so that we were holding onto the ball a little bit more in higher positions uh, so that we weren't as stretched? Uh, it's just always going to be the critical angle before I revel in the glory because until we win as a team or until we – the ultimate goal is to win, but until we take those massive strides and improvement, mm -hmm. uh, there can be no satisfaction with where I'm at. Yeah, uh, and, and so my desire to get better stems from from a couple of those things, and uh, I think if if other people take that same mentality on, then we have the chance to repeat some of the good that we had last year, and then build on uh, those moments as well as re fixing some of the the deficiencies that we showed. Watching practice and hearing Lucci talk feels like the lines of communication are very open. Is that an accurate take? I think so, yeah. We're, we're learning his tendencies. He's learning us. Mm -hmm. And the, the, it's a start of the season. So it can only go up from here as we continue to trust each other, grow alongside each other. And once you see the, the rewards of all that work, I think you're going to see guys who are even more energized yeah. uh, than they were coming into preseason, which is saying something because uh, people are ready to go this year again. What are you excited about most this year? I'm excited about the opportunity to write a different story. I think I keep harping on our last place finish in the West, but it's something that stuck with me in the off season. It was very heavy on me at the end of the year last year as we were dropping points, not able to get wins, out mm -hmm. of playoff contention. Like I'm not used to this situation. I come from a place where we were consistently in the playoffs in my time there. We won the bubble tournament in my mm -hmm. time there with myself playing a, a big role in that. Uh, we got to MLS Cup in 2018, and we were finishing top of the West in 2017 and fighting for the top of the West in 2020 and, and uh, getting into the playoffs in those years where they were considered down years. So for me to be finishing last, and I know other people coming in from different teams, like look at Jamiro coming mm -hmm. from a Supporter Shield winning team, you know, some of the pieces that have been here a while and who were not accustomed to losing before coming here and then – have had some a couple tough seasons, uh, yeah. and it hasn't all been tough because 2020 they did make the playoffs. But uh, we need to write that, and and there's a sense of urgency within our locker room, within the individuals, within the coaching staff, mm -hmm. both who come from San Jose, whether they were here before us, or who are new to San Jose, that this is not reflective of who we are as a club, uh, and we have to take that on because uh, it's it's the players and the staff against the rest of the league when it comes down to it. And we need to be ready to, to show that last year was an anomaly mm -hmm. and that we're, we're a team of winners. 
Jeremy, I feel the fire burning, man. This is exactly what I think everybody wants to hear. Very excited for you and your teammates here in 2023, and I hope I can bug you again soon. All right, man? <laughs> Thanks for having me.